although the term lords and ladies really didn't come in until the 17th century. However, the oldest name that we can find for it is cuckoo pint, where the term cuckoo uh, it means lively, and pint stands for pintle or the penis. It has, certainly in medieval times, been considered as an aphrodisiac. Lords and ladies are found at, really at the edges of the woodland, but they also don't like it to be totally overgrown because they require light intensity in order to go through their developmental stages. They like it nice and moist, so lo loamy soil is really good. Generally, you will find them flowering from about early to mid-April until early May. Although you will have seen the leaves from about February onwards. So here we can see the leaf, or the spathe as it's called, has unfurled to reveal the spadix. And in this case, it's male. We know that because it's purple. It's the central stalk that is so important for pollination purposes. It's the point at which heat is released. And that heat is used to volatilize smelly compounds that act as an insect attractant, particularly for female midges. Early evening, they get attracted by the smell and indeed the colour, and she'll get trapped by the hairs at the base of the spadix, and then will remain there for several hours collecting pollen. And we know how they love being there because we could actually drill a small hole down at the base here and you would see that the flies would not run away. They love the warmth and the smell. But then the spathe will curl around, trapping them there for a number of hours. And then certainly in the morning, they will have unfurled to release the midge, which will hopefully go on and cross-pollinate another area. Now, we want to ensure that the spadix is thermogenic. And how do we know that that is the case? Well, if we touch it, it's hot to the touch, so suggesting it is thermogenic. However, to ensure that that is the case, we also use a thermal imaging camera. Now, Kikuk has one, and we will check to see if that spadix is indeed thermogenic. The spadix is really the site at which heat gets generated. It's actually full of starch and indeed these subcellular structures that are the powerhouse of the cell. These are known as mitochondria. I've just centrifuge this at different differential speeds to separate the mitochondria from the arum spadices um, to the bottom here through a different layered gel system. It'll keep them on ice so they can stay active. The centrifuge spins these tubes around at very fast speeds um, and using um, gravity pulls heavier objects down to the bottom of the tube and the lighter objects close to the top. We've spun the heavy mitochondria away from lighter materials found within the spadices. So I'm just going to take this mitochondrial layer from the bottom of the tube, remove it gently and move it into a different centrifuge tube so it can be spun once again. Take this to the lab and then measure its activity. These mitochondria in the spadix are very unusual. They release all of the energy that's in the starch as heat. And that heat is used for a number of different functions. 
either to volatilize these stinky compounds that act as an insect attractant, or alternatively, they may be used to melt the snow and hence allow the plant to come through. So skunk cabbage in Japan, when they are flowering, they produce a lot of heat, which sometimes can melt the snow surrounding them. So the power of the heat production is very high. But you know, we really want to know the molecular mechanism, how it was controlled. Our skunk cabbage uh, doesn't have molecular mechanism, which, you know, this alarm macuratum possesses. So I really surprised the temperature of the alarm macuratum raises up to 35 degrees Celsius, even though the ambient temperature dropped as low as 15 degrees of some Celsius. So we're using the Arum lily spadix as a source of a protein that we're very much interested in that is called the alternative oxidase. We're interested in looking at its structure as well as its function because although the thermogenic plants are a major source of this protein, it is ubiquitous amongst all plants. And what we're interested in is trying to determine what is its overall function. And so the Arum lily provides us with a, a unique source of this particular protein. Uh, we already extracted the, an algorithm from uh, Japanese skunk cabbage. And I'm really interested in the aromacuratum, which has a potential to develop new types of temperature controller. So that is also my interest. That's why I'm here working with Tony and my student. There's a rhyme that German young men used to use because they thought if they placed the spadix within their shoe, they would have a full dance card of all of the eligible young ladies. So, look out for the Arum lily as you walk through the woodlands. Once you spot one, again you'll wonder why you never spotted them at all. And this bank is a very good example of the various phases.